Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to solve this very popular question using conservation of energy. So this is a conservation with energy with rotation question. Let's check it out. So we have two blocks connected by a light string. Here are the two blocks. Light string means that the mass is zero and the string is ran around the pulley as shown. So the string is like this, the red line. Um, this setup, by the way, is called an at, it's called Atwood's machine, just in case your professor mentions it. It's a very classic problem, pulley with two objects hanging from it. Um, the blocks have masses 3 and 5, so I'm going to put a 3 here, um, and I'm going to put a 5 here. The pulley is a solid cylinder. This is telling us the shape of the pulley, so I can know the moment of inertia equation to use, which is going to be for a solid cylinder, half mr squared. Um, I'm actually going to call this m M3 because I have two objects and one two and I'm going to call this three um, and then R squared this is the only object that has a radius so I don't have to say R3 I just say R um, the mass M3 is 4 and the radius is 8 now if you wanted you could already calculate I but we're going to do this a little bit later um, some interesting stuff happens if you leave everything in terms of letters as I will show you it is free to rotate about a fixed perpendicular axis through its center. So what does that mean? So let me get a little disc here. Um, the idea is that the pulley is a disc, it's a solid cylinder. There's an axis through the center and perpendicular. So through the center and perpendicular means making a 90 degree angle like this with the disc. Um, it's free to rotate. So when you put the masses of different, um, when you put the objects of different masses, it's gonna tilt towards the heavy one. Um, the heavier one and but the axis is fixed so the disc itself isn't going to move imagine that it's like attached to a wall or something and it doesn't it can only spin but not move so that's what that means the whole thing is released from rest the initial velocity is zero and m2 is at a height of five meters above the ground initially so m2 is five kilograms but it also has an initial height h2 initial of zero when you release, because it's the heaviest one, it's the heavier one, it's gonna go like this, whoop, right? And it's going to hit the floor. So its final height is zero, all right? The question is, what is the speed of M2 just before it hits the ground? So what is V2 final? That's what part A is asking us. What is V2 final, okay? V2 initial is zero because the system starts from rest. The second question, part B, asks what is the pulley's speed? Now, when we talk about the speed of the pulley, we're talking about omega. The pulley doesn't have a V, it just rolls around itself. So what is omega final? Again, it's the only object that rotates, so we don't have to say omega three final, we can just say omega final, okay? Before we start, we're gonna use conservation of energy, by the way, but before we start, I wanna point out that this is a system objects are connected and connected objects always move together to have the same velocity. So V1 is at all times the same as V2 of the two blocks. Um, sometimes you, you, you see this called the velocity of the system, V system, right? Um, or simply V because there's no point in differentiating one and two. So we just call them both V. Also, whenever a rope is connected and pulling um, on a pulley, we can write the equation, so this is point number one. Um, point number two is that we can write the equation V rope equals R omega disc, whenever a rope pulls in the disc, where R is the distance to axis. It's the distance between where you pull on the rope, um, where you pull on the rope and the axis of rotation. In this case, the rope pulls on the disc from both sides at a distance of the radius, right? So all the way at the end means that the distance is the radius, okay? So I'm going to be able to write that simply V equals big R omega, okay? So I have these two extra equations to use. And by the way, um, if V equals R omega, I can just add that right here. So it's really just one big equation. Okay? You can think of this as all the velocities are the same. V equals V, which equals R omega. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and write our conservation of energy equation. K initial plus U initial plus work non-conservative 
equals k final plus u final. What's going to make this question not harder, but just sort of longer and more annoying, is the fact that I have three objects. So I have to worry about the energy of all three. So when I ask, is there a kinetic energy in the beginning, you have to think about all three objects. And actually, in the beginning, the system is not moving, so there is no kinetic energy. Potential energy, there's three of them. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all three. U initial one, U initial two, U initial three. And we'll talk about that in just a second. There's no work non-conservative because there's no work done by you. You're just watching. There's no work done by friction. Okay? And kinetic final. Um, everything's moving just before it hit the ground, right? This guy's going down, this guy's going up, and the disc is spinning. So I have kinetic final for all three of them. And I'm going to write the potential final as well. UF1, UF2, UF3. Now let's analyze this real quick. Does the first guy right here have potential energy at the beginning? The answer is no, because it's, hit, it's on the floor. Um, but it does have potential energy at the end because they flip, right? The second one has potential energy at the beginning because it's up here, but doesn't have it at the end because they flip, okay? So notice how two has it here and then one has it here. What about the disc? The height of the disc doesn't change. In the beginning, it's up here. At the end, it's up here. So we can cancel the potential energies like this, okay? All three of them have kinetic energies, but it's not enough to know that it has kinetic energy. You have to know what type of kinetic energy it has. Well, the blocks are moving up and down, so this is linear motion. So they have linear kinetic energy, but the disk is spinning, and it only spins around itself. It only has one type of, of motion, and so it has rotational kinetic energy. Cool? Now we end up with five terms. We're going to expand all of them. So this is going to be MGH. And it's for object two, so I'm going to put a two initial. It's the only energy we have in the beginning. Here we're going to have, this is linear, so it's half mv squared plus half mv squared plus, this is rotational, half i omega squared. Let's put our coefficients here. This is the first mass and it's final. First, second mass and it's final. Um, this is the moment of inertia of the third mass. I don't really have to put a three there um, because it's the only thing that has a moment of inertia. And then we have the gravitational potential energy, which the only one we have is MGH final. This is for the first mass. Cool. Now, if you look through this, you might be wondering, can I cancel some stuff? You actually can't cancel anything. You have M's everywhere, but you don't have one here. And more importantly, all the M's are different. Right? So you're not going to be able to cancel the masses because they're all different. Let me clean that up. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to sort of derive an equation. So I'm not going to plug in numbers until the end because I want to show how some stuff cancels. Okay, So it's going to look really nasty. But you know, if you're doing this in a, in a test and your professor doesn't mind, you could start plugging in numbers already. All right, But just check this out for uh, this one time and see some of the things that are going to happen here. So one of the things you want to do going forward is you always want to replace I with the I equation, which is right here. And you always want to replace omega with V. Remember we talked about this. Whenever you have a question that has a V and an omega, you're always going to, you always want to replace, rewrite your omega in terms of V. And that's so that instead of having V and omega, you have V and V, and that's better because it's fewer variables. The way you do that, is you get this equation right here, and you say omega equals V over R. So that's what you do, okay? So I'm gonna do that. So there's two things to do here, two things to expand. Nothing else can be expanded, so you're just gonna leave it alone. So I'm gonna rewrite this whole thing and then expand this when I get here, okay? M2GH2I, all I'm doing now is rewriting this. It's kind of annoying. All right, stop right there. Let's make sure I'm gonna leave some space. Finish writing this, okay? That was just rewriting. Now I have to actually uh, slow down a little bit here. For I, I'm gonna plug half M3R squared. And here I'm gonna plug, um, for omega, I'm gonna plug V over R. So 
v over r and it's big r notice what happens the r's cancel um, but really nothing else is going to cancel right what i like to do at this point is because i don't like fractions um, i'm going to multiply by the smallest number that will make this uh, make all the fractions go away basically you have a half here you have a half here here you have a one over four if you multiply that that's the lowest denominator so i'm going to multiply this by four okay and that way i end up with a four here four m two g h two i um, this becomes a two two m one v one final squared um, by the way one, one more thing before i continue um, all these v's are the same remember we talked about that so there's really no point in writing v1 final it's just v final okay plus four multiplies here this becomes a two two m two v final four multiplies against the one quarter so this becomes a one so it's going to be m3 v final squared plus four m1 g h one final this is for the first mass right there Whew. all right so remember what we're looking for okay this is extra painful because we're not plugging the numbers just yet we're looking for v final notice that we have v finals everywhere and no omegas that's what you want okay you want to have a bunch of vfs everywhere and no omegas notice also if you do sort of an inventory of everything you have you know the masses you obviously know g and you know the heights right the initial height of the second block is five and the final height of the first block is five as well right because this guy lost five of heights so this guy could gain five of heights so i'm going to put it here that both of these numbers are five you know everything so at this point you can plug in numbers and solve um, but i'm going to solve this with the letters instead and what you would do is you combine all the v's so there's vfs um, squared everywhere and I can combine the masses 2m1 plus 2m2 plus m3 okay now I'm going to um, I'm going to throw um, this guy to the other side I'm gonna clean this up a little bit boom I'm going to move this guy here to the other side so it's gonna go negative 4m2 gh2 initial minus 4 m1 g h1 final okay um remember these numbers are the same so i can just call them h and h and then in, you you notice here that i have both sides have 4 g h 4 g h the only thing that's different is the m's so i'm going to write 4 g h I'm going to factor that out m2 minus m1 equals v final square this is just the right side 2m1 2m2 m3 Whew, we're almost there now i can divide both sides by v final the goal here is to get v final by itself so it's going to look like this v final equals 4 g h m2 minus m1 over 2 m1 plus 2 m2 plus m3 and then i take the square root of that this is the final answer if you were asked to derive this okay so i'm doing the harder one which is deriving it and then we can just plug in numbers get the answer and be done now if you didn't have to derive what you would do is you would go all the way up to here so that your r's cancel and then you just plug in all your variables right don't be a hero uh, don't try to do this the cute way if you don't have to all right so um now what you would do here is you would multiply this whole thing and if i did this to get uh correctly which i hope i s did we're gonna have um four i'm gonna round gravity to 10 height is a five the difference in masses one mass is a five m2 is a five m3 m1 is a three okay and then i have two the first mass is three the second mass is five and the first mass and the third mass is a four i'm going to do this okay 
By the way, when I said I hope I did this right, I don't mean the question solution. I mean I've multiplied this together here in my paper. Um, and I think I actually plugged in the wrong number. So I'm going to just sort of do this here um, live with you guys. So you got, this is a 2, 10, um, 10 times 10, 100, 400 on the top. And at the bottom we have 6, 10, and this is 4. So this is 20. So it is the square root of 20, which is approximately 4.5. Okay. So the final velocity should be a 4.5, and this is the end of part A. Whew. The good news is, uh, don't freak out, part B is much faster. For part B, all we're looking for is omega, right? So omega is V over R, V is 4.5. The radius in this question is 8, so you would just calculate that. I don't actually have... Um, I didn't do this on the calculator I had of here. Um, this is going to be roughly like point. Um, I'm going to super round this. It's wrong, but it's 0.5, right? So you can do this on the calculator. Uh, the number is going to be a little bit different, obviously, but it should be very close to 0.5. All right. So that's it for this one. Hopefully, it made sense. You should try to, at the very least, um, make sure you know how to get to this equation here and then plug in your numbers as soon as you've replaced I and got rid of the R's. Okay, make sure you know how to do this. Let me know if you have any questions.